if you're working a nine to five right now and you are considering building a business of your own because you don't enjoy your nine to five and you think that becoming an entrepreneur is the solution to those problems, I am here to give you seven things that you might want to consider before you take that jump. Um, and for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Harry Beadle. I've built a 10K a month personal brand in the past four months by writing on Twitter. I'm a copywriter and that's, that's how I earn my money. And if you don't know what copywriting is, it's basically writing content with the uh, intent to get someone to buy something, right? I do that for my clients and I do that for myself with my own products. Um, so I have quit my nine to five. I have built a business of my own and I'm a big advocate of doing so. But I just want to make you aware that before you take that jump, there's a lot of stuff you don't realize behind the scenes that people don't tell you um, about what it's like running your own business. Um, and I have prepared probably the most BTEC presentation in the entire world to uh, explain this to you, but I think it will serve the purpose. Right, so these are the seven things that you, you need to bear in mind before you pull the plug. Okay, uh, first of all, it is fucking brutal, right? Especially because what will probably happen, right, is you will need to have an income while you like get your business up and running at the start, right? And what that means essentially is you will be both working your nine to five and then in your spare time, you will be building this thing on the side. And basically what that means is that any spare time you have, like any evening plans, any stuff on the weekend, that is all, all of your free time, it's just like gone. You, you have to just dedicate it to the business, which means like you won't be seeing your friends as much, like if at all, you'll, be, you'll barely see your family for the first few months because you're building this thing and you, you know it's the route out of your nine to five. Um, but for the first few months, at least, you basically will be a shut in because you're, you're, you're essentially working two jobs. And I think, people really really don't appreciate that like i built um i built my business probably in uh two three maybe four hours a day um when i was when i was first getting started um like I, i've escaped my nine to five now so i obviously have a lot more time but at that time if you think four extra hours of work a day sometimes on top of your existing work if you aren't prepared for that and you you don't realize the toll that that is going to take on you, like just mentally, like you're going to be exhausted, like you're going to be so, so tired. I, I would routine like every single day for four months straight. I got up at 5.30, sat at my computer, wrote for two hours, went to work uh, between 8 a.m. and I'd get back about 7 p.m. I would eat dinner. Then about half seven, I would get back on my computer so that I could learn more about copywriting, learn how it worked. And I would literally read until 10 p.m., at which point I had to go to bed in order to be able to get up the next morning. And then I would repeat that cycle over and over and over again for about three months straight, right? And then even on the weekend, right, I was waking up at like 8 a.m. so that I could then spend basically the entire weekend, not like publishing content or anything like that, but just like learning about my skill because I needed to get good fast so that I could get out of the nine to five, which I hated. And if you aren't willing to put in that time commitment, you have two options. You can either massively elongate the process and just accept that it might take 12 months before you can escape your job, or you can actually go through that really, really hard graph at the start. And if you do go that route, I will just prep you. It is fucking hard. And I think a lot of people don't realize how hard that is. Um, the second point, uh, that you're probably not aware of when it comes to building a business is that one of the selling points, and this is this is why I got into it myself, right? I wanted freedom. I wanted the ability to dictate how I spend my day. I wanted autonomy in my life. And you don't get that in a nine to five. And don't get me wrong, I'm so, so happy that I now have that in my life. But what you've got to realize is that freedom is a double-edged sword, right? If you have never owned a business before, you've probably never ever been the only person holding yourself accountable because when you go to school, it's your teachers telling you what to do, you get home, your mum's telling you you need to go and do your homework, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You go to uni, you have lectures which you have to attend to, okay, fine, you might skip some, but realistically you have a structured plan that you need to follow. 
and then you get a job and you go there and your boss is telling you what to do etc 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 well when you start your business like i remember the first day after i'd left my nine to five i woke up and it was the weirdest feeling in the world in the sense that like if i wanted to i could have just slept in i could have slept until 10 10 a.m like i had all the freedom in the world to do that i didn't have anyone holding me accountable whatsoever and so if you're not prepared for that you it is a very very dangerous game to start playing right if you're if you're not the sort of person that can already hold yourself accountable you aren't ready to start a business right and that is why i advise people prove to yourself that you can hold yourself accountable for four to five months before you quit your your nine to five prove to yourself that you can get up early when no one else is telling to you prove to yourself that you can stay up late when no one else is telling you because unless you can do that stuff on your own then don't don't quit your nine to five because you won't be able to do it once you start your once you be out once you start your business now the third point is that at the start, I think there's this like, there's this like pie in the sky, like hairy, like sort of like fairy tale image of entrepreneurship that like it's it's all about chasing your passion and, and chasing your dreams. I don't believe that is the case. I think for most people, the reason they get into this is more to avoid pain. I know that was my the case for myself, right? I, I despise the nine to five life just in general. Like, I just hate being told what to do. I hate being ordered around. I'm a, like I'm just not a good employee. I'm very good at driving myself forward, but I'm just terrible at following other people's instructions. Um, and for me, at least, I wasn't so much driven by like a passion for what I do, more more by like more by like a pain to get out of that situation and and realise that building my own business was was the solution for that, but the actual driving force behind why I why I chose to build my own business was because I wanted to get out of a painful scenario. And I think it's very, very easy to think that as soon as you get into this uh, this game, that your life is just going to be full of passion and, and, all, and you're just going to love every day. It's definitely not the case, right? There's definitely a, a the driving force behind most of the, most entrepreneurs, I think, is pain rather than rather than passion for their craft. Um, the fourth point, right? None of your friends and family will under, understand. Fucking hell, this really was a B Tech presentation. Um, none of your friends and family will get it, right? Um, try it as they might. You you can explain it all all you try, and it's not a fault of their own. It, they they will try their best, but they just won't get what you're doing. And I think when you work a job, it, you've probably experienced this yourself, where you explain to someone what you do, but they don't really get it because they've never seen you do it on a day to day basis. They've never experienced it for themselves. And I think when you work a job and that's the case, you don't really care because like you don't very often attach yourself a part of your identity to your job. When you own your own business, it becomes essentially like a part of your identity. And when people don't understand, through no fault of their own, what you do, it's really, really hard to deal with. And it's it, you can try and you can explain stuff, but they just won't get it because they haven't experienced it themselves. And that can be really kind of soul crushing because you're pouring your heart and soul into this uh, this project of yours, this business, this like baby of yours, basically. People just don't understand. And the only, I'm not a parent, right? The only analogy that I could uh, imagine this is similar to is you imagine you've had a kid and you're talking to someone that doesn't have a kid. You imagine trying to convey what being a parent is like to them. I can imagine it's a bit like that where like they're just never really going to quite get what being a parent is like because they just haven't done it themselves. And it's a bit like that. And it can be pretty, pretty demoralizing at times, um, just, just so you're aware. Now, the fifth point, you will constantly feel like you should be working, right? I work much fewer hours now than I did when I was working my nine to five. My nine to five was essentially like an eight till six, eight till seven job. Um, I probably work from 7 a.m. till 12 p.m., maybe 2 p.m. some days now. It varies, but sometimes it's longer than that. Sometimes it's shorter. It's kind of up to me. Um, but you, no matter how long you work, 
whether it's whether you're working 10 hour days, whether you're working four hour days, you will always feel like you should be working more. You will always have a slightly nagging guilt in the back of your mind that you could be working more. And it's very, very easy, especially at the start, to succumb to that and to always end up at your computer doing more work. Um, and the paradox there is that often the more work you do, the worse your results are because you'll end up focusing on the wrong stuff. Your mind won't work as well. You won't be as clear headed um, and your your business will actually start to suffer um, despite the fact you're putting in more work. Um, and it's just something to be aware of that you you may constantly be plagued by feelings of I could be doing more right now. And you have to have the self-discipline to not constantly sit at your desk, to detach yourself from your work and go and do other stuff in your life that also brings you meaning, right? It's definitely a trap that I've fallen into myself in the past. I'm definitely not perfect. I'm definitely still guilty of this, but I'm getting better as I go and I'm, I'm learning better mechanisms and better systems to cope with um, this like constant nagging feeling of I could be doing more right now. Number six, right? Most mornings I wake up and I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do that day. I have a routine, obviously, like I, I know I need to write um, emails for my for my newsletter because that's basically where I generate all of the income for my business. I know I need to write content on Twitter because that's where I got a lot of my, my clients from. But in general, once you start your own business, you will not have a fuck fucking clue what you're doing. Like every day you will wake up pretty much feeling like I don't know what I'm doing. Like it's a really weird feeling because when you work a job, obviously you have someone telling you, okay, Harry, you need to go and do this today. You need to go and do this task, this task, this task. And you have someone just basically telling you what to do and all your job to do is just go and implement it, right? You've just got to sit there and, and do the do the thing well when you start your own business it's not you don't have someone telling you what tasks are important to be working on you have to work that shit out for yourself and i would say 80 percent of the time i wake up in the morning with a, a a sense of dread of i don't know what the fuck i'm going to do today and i've been successful at this right like i i've built a 10k per per month brand in in four months and ultimately that's that's better than 99% of that's better results than, than most people get in this game in, in that in that time period especially and yet I still wake up most mornings not knowing what I'm doing so it, it, the reality is you will probably experience that too if you decide to quit your nine to five if you decide to become a full-time uh, entrepreneur a full-time creator whatever you want to call it you will spend the majority of your time not knowing what the hell you're doing. And you've got to be okay with that. You've got to be okay with the self-doubt and, and constantly second-guessing yourself. If you're not, then this isn't the right path for you. Uh, the number seven thing to realize, it's kind of related to the last one, but you are completely on your own, right? You will spend, when you work a nine to five, you will go into an office realistically. I know a lot of us work from home now, but you will still uh, spend a lot of your time in the office around other people. When you work on your own business, you you will spend the majority of your time alone, especially at the start when you before you've got employees or anything like that. Um, and of course, you will have calls with clients and stuff like that. But it can be quite lonely. It, you have to be someone that's okay with spending time on your own. If you're someone that constantly needs to be around people, um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Like, I personally don't. I quite like being on my own for, for a, at least a chunk of the day. Um, and I quite enjoy that aspect. But if you if you don't enjoy being on your own and you don't enjoy carving your own path in life, it's not the right choice for you. You need to, you need to stick into, uh, you need to either stay at your nine to five until you're more comfortable being alone, or you just need to find a different different solution because you're going to be miserable right if you, if you have to be around people all the, all the time you it's not it's not the right path for you um it's just something to be aware of um because it can be a very very lonely path and i know a lot of people do suffer with this um i'm not personally one of them uh but i know it's it's it can really it can really really shock people the first time they leave their job they wake up in the morning and suddenly there it's just them in their house and there's no one telling them what to do. They've got no colleagues. It's just them. Just be aware of that as one final point. 
Okay guys, um, if you did enjoy that video, uh, I'd appreciate if you give it a like, uh, leave a comment, below, uh, a comment below, maybe you're uh, you know, like a, you own your own business, maybe you could share your own experience, um, and then subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna be dropping uh, many more videos like this one to give you an insight into what it looks like to, to run your own business. Um, and then you can also check out my website, harrybeadle.com. Uh, uh, I write, articles there pretty much every day on what it's like being a, a business owner and to help you do this to help you uh, build one of your own if that is something you're interested in okay i hope you found that useful guys um again apologies for the absolutely fucking dreadful presentation i can't promise the uh quality is going to get any better in uh the coming weeks but uh we're moving okay later